Human brain need never deteriorate. This is shocking news for most people. And it should be shocking news because in society today, we've got 1,700 new cases of Alzheimer's being diagnosed every week. That's quite alarming, isn't it? And I don't know anyone that wants to go there. In a book written only a few years ago called Stop Alzheimer's Now, Dr. Bruce Fife in his book, he shows very clearly that Alzheimer's is preventable and even at some stages, even treatable. If it is not able to get a turnaround, definitely there can be a cessation of the decline in the, in the symptoms. So what I'd like to do today is I'd like to take you into this amazing brain that we all own, the most amazing computer on the planet. Notice with the skeletal system, it is an internal structure causing man to stand upright, but when it comes to the head, it becomes an external structure. It now plays a protective role. And in this external structure, into the most delicate and yet most important organ of the body, there are seven areas of access. There are two ears, two eyes, two nostrils and a mouth. Everything we hear or have ever heard is monitored in our brain. Everything we see and have ever seen is monitored in our brain. Everything we smell gives a message to our brain and everything that goes into the mouth, whether it be food or drink or other, has an effect on the brain. Let's begin by looking at the brain. This is the brain from side on, looks a bit like a slug. And this is the brain looking from the top down. Notice that there are two lobes in the front of the brain. And those two lobes are referred to as if they were one because they have the same function. It's called the frontal lobe. It is in the frontal lobe where our intellect is. It is in the frontal lobe where our reasoning powers reside. It is in the frontal lobe part of the brain where judgment takes place. And it is in the frontal lobe part of the brain where what I call the most wonderful gift that God has given to mankind, it is the will. The will is the governing power in the nature of man. It is the power of decision or of choice. And when you think about it, our our life choices determine our destiny. Everything in life happens really because of the will, because of the decisions that we make. In the human brain, the frontal lobe takes up approximately between 33 and 38% of the brain. So 33 to 38% of the brain is taken up by the frontal lobe. In a monkey, frontal lobe takes up approximately 17% of the brain. In a dog, 7.5%. In a cat, 3, 3%. One lady said, not my cat. Well, if the human brain can develop or shrink, the frontal lobe that is, then I guess it can in a cat. The human brain has the largest frontal lobe of any creature. In the human brain, the frontal lobe is not fully developed till the age of 30. Interesting to note that in many cultures, young men traditionally were not given positions of responsibility till they were 30. In the Bible, we see the story of Jesus. He didn't begin his ministry till the age of 30. It's at the age of 30 that the frontal lobe is fully developed. And that's why parents, I say, bind your children to your heart when they're little because they're going to need you in their teens and in their early 20s. They need someone with a fully developed frontal lobe. Why is there a difference between 33 and 38%? In homes where children grow up with the hedge of safety around the home, which is the hedge of discipline, frontal lobes strengthen. In homes where children have definite guidelines and there are consequences for every action, frontal lobe strengthens. You see, the mind and the nerves gain tone and strength through the exercise of the will. The will is not a muscle, but it is just like a muscle because you're, the more you use it, the stronger it gets. 
And it's a wonderful thing to work with, especially when you're raising children. I'll give you a story of my sister. My sister is a ballerina. She's a beautiful woman, very refined. She had four children. And a girlfriend said to her one day, Fiona, I don't get it. She said, you believe in smacking. I don't. I smack my children all day long and I've never seen you smack your child. I love my sister's response. She says, oh, I always give them a choice. <laughs> you use the will. It's like how often when you say to a child, whether they be five or 10 or 15, you can go anywhere on this mat, but you can't go off the mat. What's the first thing that they do? They step off the mat. And when they step off the mat, they're looking at you. Why are they looking at you? Is there going to be a consequence for me stepping off the mat? Is what my adult friend here say true? And how many parents say, I told you not to go off the mat. Child thinks that didn't hurt. So they go off a little bit further. That didn't hurt. Can you see what's happening? So they go right off the mat. There's no consequence. Or maybe the, the parent just starts yelling. But if the child steps off the mat and they tread on a bed of stinging nettles, I can assure you they'll never tread off the mat again. You see, pain is a wonderful teacher. I don't believe in beating the living daylights out of children, but I also don't believe in letting the child do and go wherever they want. Children are very happy when there are very clear guidelines. Now, let's say the child stepped off the mat onto a bed of stinging nettle. Next time the child wants to tread off the mat, memory <laughs> was painful. So the child exercises self-control and does not tread off the mat. Can you see why discipline teaches a child self-discipline? And as the child exercises the will, the will gets stronger. And they're the children that become adults that are very easy to work with in the workforce because they've, been gro they've grown up with, with very, clear, very clear guidelines. But the parent that said, don't go off the mat, I told you to go off the mat, do you know that parent is teaching the child to lie? because they don't do what they say they're going to do. <laughs> it's an unfaithful parent. Very important to be a faithful parent. The will. The will should not be beaten to pieces and it should not be allowed to go wherever it wants. I liken the training of the will like the training of a vine around a veranda pole. At the moment, I'm training a vine around my veranda pole. Now, if I grab that vine and force it around my veranda pole, I will break it. But if I let it go wherever it wants, what, what do we know about one in every hundred tendrils might get around the veranda pole? But every couple of days I go back, oh, it's going away again. So I just gently tuck it in around. I did it yesterday, actually. Few more days I'll go back, oops, I'll just gently tuck it around. One writer explained it like this, the will should be gently guided and directed. <gasps> back again, back again, here a little, there a little. It's the best way. And when I am dealing with people who come to me for help with, with health issues, I cannot do much unless I have their will. A lady sat in front of me today, she, one day and she said I've been trying to get here for one year she said finally I was able to come with a little help from my friends anything you say I will do what have we got there <laughs> what do they say where there's a will there's a way and I've seen people heal dramatically because they've got a will and then there was the other lady she sat in front of me crying I said what's the matter she said I don't want to be here I said, I've never had anyone say that. I've had plenty of people say I've been wanting to come for a long time. So my next question was, well, why are you here? Oh, my sister and my, my mother, they wanted me to come. I said to her, you know you have liver cancer and bone cancer. Well, I don't feel like I have. I said, would you like me to drive you home? Because I thought, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point in being here if you don't have a will to do it? It's a powerful way to help people, and, but actually it's the only way you can. In the frontal lobe part of the brain, this is where our self-control is. That's why with 
exercise.